I'm always telling people, if you have a rooster in your flock that is making your or your hen's life miserable, there is no need to deal with that. There is never a shortage of roosters looking for a new home. Just like this guy here, this is a reject from my Ermine Americana breeding pen. He's got just a little bit too much of yellow leakage in his white, uh, but he is still a fantastic rooster. So you might be wondering, well, what makes a good or a bad rooster? In today's video, I'm gonna share with you the three traits that I look for when I'm selecting my keeper roosters, regardless of whether they're just for a pet or they're a breeder for my hatchery business. So let's go. Trait number one is the most important, and that is a good rooster will never attack you or your children. And a lot of times I'll see people say, well, all roosters attack. They're just doing their job, which is to protect their family. My opinion of that is it would be their job if they were still a wild jungle fowl trying to survive the wilderness out in the forest, but they're not. They're meant to be a domesticated animal. Look, if you're in the suburbs of Omaha, you just do not need a four pound rooster going full Liam Neeson on you every time you open the coop door. I will find you. In all seriousness though, you guys, I think a lot of us take domestication for granted. I think we kind of consider it as like a goal that we reached at some point in time, when the reality is that domestication never stops. It is a constant ongoing process. And we do have a responsibility, especially if you are breeding even just casually or you're passing on birds that might be bred by someone else. I do think we have a responsibility to ensure that we are promoting domestication to go forward and not backwards. On my farm, when it comes to aggressive roosters, we have a two strike year out policy. And that might seem a little harsh to some people and that's fine. You can set up your own parameters based on your own priorities. But for me, you have to understand I have a toddler and he's very involved in the day to day chores of our homestead. That's really important to me that he gets those life skills that you get from being on a farm. We are very blessed that our son was born with two beautiful blue eyes. However, the good Lord did not provide us with any spares. So I do not care how gorgeous a chicken is if he could be on the cover of Chicken Vogue. Uh, it's just not worth risking my son's vision. Uh, there's no chicken on the planet that is worth that to me. So uh, that is where we stand on it, um, but you can set whatever parameters you want on your farm. Trait number two that I look for is this sound right here. And to do a rooster translation there, essentially what he's saying is, hey ladies, come over here, see what I found. And you can even see in that video, he is gesturing with his head, calling the girls over, showing them where the food is. And that is a great trait because what that shows is that he actually cares about the well-being of his hens. He has good paternal instincts. He is caring for his flock and that is what a rooster is supposed to do. So that tells me that he's gonna take good care of his girls. He's not gonna be aloof doing whatever he wants over there. Um, he's actively caring for them and he will protect them from predators. So that is a good rooster, one that actually cares about his hens. Trait number three, this one does not apply to younger cockerels. This is only for roosters that are like a year or older. So this one excludes the younger guys because all roosters, when they're cockerels, they go through this hormonal adolescence phase where they are extremely hormonal, um, but they have no riz, as the kids would say. <laughs> they're very awkward and they don't really know what to do. So all my roosters go through this phase, even the really, really good ones. So if you've got a young rooster, uh, ignore this. This is for the older fellas. But trait number three, you're actually gonna watch the behavior of the hens whenever they are being bred. A lot of people never get to experience this because most people only have one rooster or no rooster at all. But if you have a large flock where you have multiple roosters, you'll see that the hens will actually have a preference of which rooster they're with. Typically what I'll see is the majority of the hens will stay with the more dominant rooster. And then the hens that are at the lowest end of the pecking order, they'll kind of hang out more with the submissive rooster. So you'll kind of have two flocks. You'll have one large one with the dominant rooster, and then you'll have a little smaller one that is with the more submissive rooster. And what you'll see is if a hen is being pursued by a rooster she does not want to be with, she will run away and she will make an absolute racket. She'll be screaming at the top of her lungs. And what she's trying to do is she's trying to get the attention of her preferred rooster to come over and save her and tell that other rooster to knock it off. So if you have one rooster, he's over a year old and you're noticing your hens are running away from him and screaming anytime he tries to breed them, uh, they're probably just not a fan of him. He just doesn't have the riz. So you might want to replace him with a more charismatic fellow that will make the lady swoon. 
In all seriousness though, you guys, if you do keep your rooster in with a flock of girls that are rejecting him, um, what's gonna end up happening is he's gonna get more aggressive with the breeding and your hens are gonna get stressed. And when your hens are stressed, they're more susceptible to things like vent gleat and egg production can uh, drop. So moral of the story, if you don't like your rooster very much, he's gotta go. If your girls do not like their rooster very much, he's gotta go. All right, guys, those are the three traits that I look for in my roosters that I keep. I need your help down in the comments below. I want you to let me know if you've ever had an excellent rooster. I want you to tell me what breed he was and where you got him from and tell me what made him so great. Uh, I want you guys to do that in the comments so that anyone who is realizing that their rooster is a jerk and they don't have to deal with that anymore. I want the comments section to be like a directory so they can look down and see what breeds to look for in their next rooster so that they can replace their jerk with a sweet one and make their lives so much easier. So comment down below and let me know your experiences with your best roosters. Uh, let me know if you've had a jerk rooster too. Tell us about him. Where'd you get him? What breed he was? What made him such a jerk? Uh, I want the comment section to be just a wealth of information and anecdotal stories that everyone has about their experiences with roosters. Um, I will start uh, anytime that I am recommending a rooster to someone who wants one that's chill. I always go for blue laced red wine dots. I've never had an aggressive blue laced red wine dots. They take excellent care of their girls. I love blue laced reds. So uh, that is my recommendation to anyone looking for a good rooster. Check out the comments down below and see everyone else's experiences. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like that, be sure to subscribe and we will see you in the next one. Bye.